Hey Bass Fanatics, it's time. It's finally that time of year to talk about topwaters, one of my favorite ways to fish. Topwater fishing is so exciting, it's so visual when the fish is coming up to the surface and blasting your lure. This is going to be a tutorial about topwaters, a general tutorial about all the different types, the kind of topwaters that I like to fish, how I fish them, and I'm just going to share with you what I typically fish with when it comes to topwaters. Before we get too far into the video, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit that like button, feel free to comment and share the video with your friends. Okay, first up we want to talk about these type of weedless frogs, weedless rats, and they have weedless bluegills these days. Let's see if I can pull one out for you here. There we go. So these lures are meant to fish in heavy cover. It could be brush, it could be slop, weeds, milfoil, lily pads, hydrilla, all the different kinds of thick weedy cover. They're weedless. They have these hooks that are set up to be weedless to allow you to, to fish through the heavy cover and they do very well that way. But these lures now are so good that you can also catch fish in open water and so what I like to do with these is when I'm fishing these lures I usually cover a lot of water so I'll fish a weedy slop area and then maybe there'll be some open water before the next weedy area and I'll still throw these in the open water because today you can make these work in such a way where they're just as good in open water and they'll catch plenty of fish that way. So some of the lures that I like the best, this one is a river to sea bully wall. It's one of my favorite frogs. This one is a live target mouse, field mouse. It's a live target sunfish. And this is one I've been playing with a lot recently. It's called a Savage Gear makes this. It's Savage Gear Lily Ninja Mouse, a very good bait. The Lily Ninja Mouse has the hooks. They come very sharp. The nice thing I like about this bait is it, it's very effective, very sharp hooks. It's good quality bait, but it only costs five or six dollars, whereas some of these other ones are 11 or 12 dollars. So it's a very economical lure and it works just as well as the others. Uh, in fact, it's even more weedless than some. And so if you want to have a little bit of a better hookup ratio, you can take a pliers and bend these hooks up slightly so that, uh, so that they're not digging into the lure so much where it's harder for the fish to get hooked. So right along with fishing those slop type topwater lures, I have to talk about these toads. So this is a Zoom Horny Toad. This is a black. I fish with four different colors primarily. I like black. I like white, I like green pumpkin, and I dip the tails in chartreuse. That looks makes it look like a bluegill. And this color is called bullfrog. I like this color also quite a bit. If you want to learn more about how to fish these toads and the type of toads that I like to fish, check out my video, Tactical Topwater Toad Techniques. And I'll put a link to that video right here. Speaking of that link, there's a lot of topwater videos that I've done, so I'm going to put more links up here with other topwaters like uh, the secrets for topwater fishing and uh, some of the other topwater videos that I've done so that you can take a look at those also. So right along with toads and topwater frogs are buzz baits, the standard buzz bait. Still a great option. It's fairly weedless. They catch fish, they make a lot of noise, and they're a very good 
lure to use for topwater fishing. Here's somewhat of a hybrid lure. It's a topwater frog lure, but it's got a tail that actually spins and makes quite a bit of a ruckus like a buzzbait would. It's called a teckle sprinkler frog and it works quite well. These buzzbaits that I like to throw are Lee Bailey Cavatron buzzbaits. And I will put links to these lures in the description so that you can see what the lures actually are and if you want to buy them I'll put the links there. So you saw me with the buzzbaits. A spinnerbait can be a topwater lure also and the way you make it a topwater lure is that you retrieve it very quickly so that it bulges the surface. These blades will nearly come out of the surface of the water and make a bulge and that's how you can make a spinnerbait into a topwater presentation. It's a good way to fish a spinnerbait. Next up we have the River to Sea Whopper Ploppers. If you haven't bought these yet or haven't tried these you need to add them in your arsenal. They are fantastic topwater lures. They make a great commotion. You can stop them, you can start them, you can retrieve them very fast and they still run true. They are just great fish catchers and they come in multiple sizes. This is a good all around size. You can see I have a clear one here with a black back and a perch color pattern here. Two good all around sizes for both large mouths and small mouths. They also have this smaller size which I like for small mouths especially but it works for everything as well. One of the things that you should be noticing by now are some of the common color patterns that I like. You know a bait fish is basically the same whether it's a shiner or a gizzard shad or a perch. It's got a darker back and a lighter belly and so you want to try and imitate that when you're fishing topwaters. What makes topwater so effective? One of the reasons why topwater is effective is because the fish can't get a very clear look at the bait. Part of the bait is actually out of the water and so I think that makes it more effective and more likely for fish to attack. Also the, the top of the water is actually an edge so the fish can ambush bait against the edge of the uh, which is the top of the water. It's a whole different environment above the water in the air. Fish can't live in the air so you have an edge there that predator fish like largemouths can trap other fish and so that again makes topwater good and this time of year topwater could be good all day long even if it's bright don't ignore throwing a topwater because it could be good from daybreak right to dusk now generally speaking the lower light levels are usually better so usually in the morning and again um, later in the evening those are prime times but don't ignore the bake because sometimes it could work even on sunny days all day long and if you have a cloudy day where you have a, a overcast day with some light rain or light drizzle or some showers, intermittent showers, that can be a dynamite time to throw top water. So this next style of bait is has spinners fore and aft and it's a good time to throw these during the post spawn when you have a lot of little fry in the water and the fry are up on the surface making uh, it, uh, noise and commotion on the surface. These make a commotion that sounds very similar. Um, you can rip them through. And so these are, I believe, Cotton Cordell Boy Howdies. And you can see again, um, I choose color combinations that I think work well. This is dark back, um, white belly. This one's clear. So when you have, anytime you have extremely clear water or you have highly pressured lakes, I like to use translucent or clear topwater baits. It's just that much harder for a fish to get a good look at it and it makes them more likely to take the bait. This is a Lucky Craft version of the same thing. You can see these spinners spin very freely. This is another Lucky Craft called a Kelly J, and this is another good lure to use during the post-spawn period. Here's an oldie but a goodie. These are heading baby torpedoes or tiny torpedoes. There's different sizes of them. They're torpedo baits. If they just have one spinner in the back, they're meant to be ripped forward and then stopped. And they're very effective for both largemouth, but especially for smallmouth bass. You can't have a topwater discussion without talking about poppers. They are just incredibly effective for catching bass, both largemouth and smallmouth. One of the reasons for this is because the popper can just sit there and you can move it ever so slightly and it'll give it action and yet it won't be going very far. So it sits right in front of the bass's face and that drives them crazy in a lot of cases and it is a very effective lure for throwing. You can't throw this in heavy cover, but wherever you have open water, this is a great bait. Usually on very windy days, it may not be the best option either, 
but when you have a little ripple on the water or even dead calm conditions, a popper is tough to beat. Some of the ones that I have here are the Rebel Excalibur Super Pop Bars. I love this bait. These two you can see, if you look at uh, the mouths of both of these, I've modified them differently. This one, I've shaved the bottom so that it spits water forward a little bit more. This top extrude, extrudes further. This one, I shave much more even, and so it's easier for me to fish this lure very fast, where I can kind of almost walk the dog with it and make it spit as it's going along. Two different ways to fish the poppers. Oftentimes I like to paint the cup of these, the, the pop surface face of these red or white. This is another Super Pop R. It's a bass pattern. And sometimes I think that white face adds a little bit of flash and just attracts the fish a little bit more. Another great uh, color pattern here, this baby bass pattern. This is an old storm chug bug, very effective bait. Not sure if you can get this anymore, but they were very popular at one time and they work well. This is a Rico popper, one of the best known poppers out there. This is a Berkeley Frenzy, another good popper. Here's an Excalibur popper, very nice made, good quality, nice tail. On most of the poppers, I like to have a feather tail. I think it just adds a little more attraction. Here's another storm chug bug that's clear, so the fish can't get a good look at it, and yet you can make this thing make a good commotion in the water. Sometimes that's a very good way to trigger strikes. The next category of baits are meant to be walk the dog baits. By walk the dog, it's a, we mean a, a particular action that you impart on the bait by using your rod. It's very similar to how you would fish a jerk bait, where you jerk the rod downward and you leave slack in the line. And when you do that, each time you jerk the rod, the bait will sachet one way, this way, and then this way, and back until it comes back to you. So these are two very good walk the dog baits. These are Zara Spooks. I like this bone white. Again, you see I have clear. You're probably seeing some, uh, some commonality in my color choices on these baits. That's for a good reason. So take note of that. The other thing that you might notice is that I modify the way I put the hooks on these baits. If you're interested in me doing a video on how I do this and why I do it, just comment and I'll make that video. This is another really good walk the dog bait. It's, it's made by Reaction Innovations. It's called a Vixen. They have a couple different sizes here as you can see. This Vixen walks the dog quite well and I find that the faster you fish this, the more effective this one tends to be. You can fish this one very fast, where it walks very fast across the surface. Works very well that way. These next baits are made by Bagley. I don't know if they're in production anymore, but they're called finger mullets. I like these because they're different. They're made of wood. They don't have any rattles. They're a little smaller, and so they do well on small mouths and on pressured waters for large mouths. They don't make the same kind of noises because they have no rattles and because they're made of wood. So it's a good different bait to have in your box. You see I have two nice colors here, a minnow lure, and then I also have a fire tiger pattern, which, which is also a good color in some systems. This wind is picking up, so I apologize if there's any wind noise on this video. I'm trying to stay protected in the patio here. So these are Lucky Craft Sammies. These are great walk the dog baits. Probably my favorite when it comes to walking the dog. They come in different sizes. This is a Sammy 100. It's probably the one I use the most. This one is a ghost minnow pattern, a very good color. You see that translucent property to it. Good color to use. Here are two more. This is a really good alewife pattern, that black back, light belly. I like to have that tail feather on some of them. And then this is one that's almost completely clear very good baits. Now those are the Sammy 100s, but there's also this little guy. This is a Ghost Minnow Sammy 65, and do not ignore this little one if you can find it. It is a killer. It works very well on ultra clear lakes, on ultra pressured lakes, and on rivers, and it works very well in ponds, as you might imagine as well. Great smallmouth lure. This thing catches big fish. Don't misjudge it because of the small size of the lure. It does catch big fish. And then finally here we have a hybrid type of bait. This is the Lucky Craft Gunfish. You can walk the dog with it like a Sammy, but it also has a cupped mouth, so it spits just like a popper would. So you get a little bit of the best of both worlds with this bait 
And this long slender profile is a profile that's long been proven for bass. They just like this profile. It's easy for them to grab. You get good hookup ratios as a result of it. And it's another great bait to have in your arsenal. Make sure you keep an eye on the links up here in this video for other top water tutorials that I've done in the past. I'll put links up here so that you can check those out. They give more detail for how you fish specifically some of these different lures and they're excellent information to improve your fishing. I'm Den Herring. My channel is Fish Den 365. We're certified bassified. Make sure you hit that like button. Please subscribe to my channel. We're moving closer to 250 subscribers. When we get there, I'm going to be giving away a Norman Top Dollar, my favorite all-time topwater lure. So we'll be giving that away at 250. Right now we're around 213 subscribers, so we're moving quickly in that direction. And I look forward to getting the next video out to you. May God bless your fishing endeavors.